Welcome to our online talk, Women in Science. Today we're going to talk about a little bit of an insight about possibilities for international female scientists in Germany, as well as funding opportunities, how to find a postdoc position, a PhD position, career possibilities in Germany. <coughs> My name is Caroline Becker, and I work for the DAD in the section International Research Marketing. Today with us, it is my great pleasure to introduce our panelists. Uh, we have Professor Nora Kula from the Institute of Chemistry at the University of Magdeburg, as well as Professor Barbara Kirchner from the Mulliken Center of Theoretical Chemistry at the University of Bonn, and Dr. Agnese Loda, MSCA postdoctoral fellow at the Hurt Group at the EMBL Heidelberg. I see everyone's already in the chat. Good to see you all here. Thank you for coming. And now you know who we are. So we would like to also get to know you a little bit better. Maybe you can answer a little question for us in a poll. We would like to know what is your current career stage? All right, it already looks like there's a lot of PhD students here. Gonna give this poll a few more seconds. All right, so you should all be able to see the results right now. It looks like uh, the most that we have here is currently PhD students in attendance. There's also a lot of graduates, actually, and postdocs from the first phase, postdocs from the second phase. Maybe those who chose other, you can put in the chat, what's your current status? What are you doing right now? And without further ado, we would also like to start with questions, because I'm sure you have a lot of questions for our panelists today. And maybe we can start with a question for Professor Kirchner. And as a professor who's also involved in the recruitment decisions at universities, what do you think is the current situation like and uh, what's, your, what's your opinion on it? Uh, I can't hear you currently. I didn't switch on my ah. microphone, but now I hope it works. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, nice that you joined this webinar. Uh, so I wanted uh, to start by saying um, there is, a, a, in Germany, there is a lack uh, of uh, female researchers. Um, and we have a lot of work to do in order to come to an equal uh, uh, standing between female and male. And probably you're wondering what Germany, such an advanced country, is still needing to have uh, equal opportunity. And this sounds maybe a bit negative, but what I wanted to tell you is that people have recognized there is a big change going on. All my colleagues, uh, so and I try to, this is, so this is a very opinionated statement. Um, so because I tell from my own, own observations, I don't have uh, uh, numbers here like we just made in, in a poll. Uh, so I just tell from my own experience, and my colleagues are very eager to employ women. And uh, now, since this is only starting now, and there's uh, uh, not yet an, an equal equality between female and male researchers, um, we have another problem. There's a lack of female researchers. So, and in principle, due to this thing, which is nothing good, but uh, it has one positive side, namely that we, in principle, we need you. So people are very interested to employ female researchers recently because um, we, we, we cannot provide the numbers. Uh, this is at the university. So 
I'm not speaking for the industry here, but at the university I observe more and more that everybody tries to employ female PhD students, female postdocs, and even female professors. So this is what I wanted to tell you uh, to begin with. Even though we have a lot of homework to do to bring us to the uh, equal opportunity, uh, to the equal uh, uh, status with men, there is uh, a lot of opportunity here. Thank you so much. That sounds like a really positive outlook. Um, actually, my colleague also put some statistics in the chat if you click the link. So if you want to uh, crunch some numbers, you can check there as well. My colleagues will generally be posting some links for funding opportunities and information in the chat, so keep an eye out on that as well. Uh, Professor Kulak and Dr. Loda, do you also have, uh, what's your outlook on the situation currently, or what's your experience with the situation? Yeah, actually, I completely agree with uh, Barbara Kirchner. Um, I'm observing the same, uh, and I even think I, um, I would not be here if I uh, if I had been a, a male person, I guess, because there are so many possibilities now supporting women, and um, when people apply um, for PhD positions, for postdoc positions, for professorships. Um, for um, equal um, for equal opportunity, what people look at is if um, the the degree is the same, if uh, the scientific um, outcome is the same, then for sure the women will get uh, the position. So I think this is a very uh, positive uh, situation for female researchers at the moment, and. Um, yeah, actually, I, I can I completely agree with uh, what Barbara said. So uh, everyone should use, uh, exploit the opportunities that are given right now. I don't know um, how for, for how long this will go on. So yeah, but we are not there yet, and this is why um, we have all these uh, programs and um, supportive programs for women at the moment. And I think we deserve it for sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Loda. So yes, I um, so I do see all these uh, uh, initiatives in place as well. So I think like um, there is some kind of you know consciousness about the problem. Uh, but I also want to point out that uh, there is a problem, <laughs> and the numbers for how they look now uh, don't look very well. So I I do agree that um, there is a lot of effort in making this changing. Uh, but at least uh, what I can say from my own experience is that uh, at the end of my PhD, when I decided to continue in science, I saw many brilliant, brilliant women colleagues uh, dropping out, and I found this discouraging. And even now, uh, many times I uh, attend thesis defense, and the entire committee is composed by men, or um, the majority of the full professor I deal with are men. Um, so let's say uh, there is a reason why uh, there are all these measures in place and is to change things, but uh, there is also to say that how things are now are uh, really not balanced at all. Thank you so much. Actually, maybe could you talk a little bit more about uh, how you came to be here because you, uh, you got funding opportunities. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. can't hear you currently? Yeah. yeah so yeah, I have to say um, I didn't directly pick Germany, so I ended up in Germany for a very uh, uncommon, <laughs> uncommon reason. So I started my postdoc in Paris, uh, and then my supervisor um, um, became the director of MBL, uh, where I'm currently at in Heidelberg. So I follow her because she proposed me to follow her, uh, and I decided to. So let's say it was a second uh, move uh, after the, the first I made to France. Um, but I have to say for me it was a very good opportunity because I did get funding the moment I got uh, in Germany. So uh, I did apply to many other things and fellowship to finance my postdoc when I was in France, and I didn't get them. And then I applied to the Curie Fellowship that I own now and the L'Oreal uh, Fellowship, and I got them in, um, in Germany. So I'm very glad I came. 
Thank you. And my colleagues are also posting uh, the links to the funding opportunities in the chat right now if you want to check them out. And there will also be uh, later a document with links so you don't have to save every link right now. There will be a compilation of it. So, um, Professor Kulak and Professor Kirchner, you both work at universities. So, uh, when you get an application for a PhD position, for example, what do you think is important? Like, how uh, how do you judge those applications? Please, yeah. Professor Kirchner. Maybe, maybe I start. So what I look actually, actually nowadays I look more uh, I look first is this a female or a male student, and then I look of um, how much is the person interested in my research or how much did the people uh, do something which is connected to me. You have to know I'm a theoretical chemist, and if you come and write an application to me uh, that you want to do synthesis then I realize, okay, you cannot be serious because, um, so, so I have to get the impression that you're really serious and that it, that you know what, uh, or at least you don't know the level I, how I know it, what I'm doing, but you have to know uh, a little bit what I'm doing and it has to fit. So, of course, you can change a little bit the subject, but if you apply as a, as an organic chemist to a theoretical chemist, without having any basics in, in, in um, uh, theoretical chemistry or interest in theoretical chemistry, then I'm not interested. Also, I don't reply if you write, dear sir, I still get these emails. So, <laughs> so um, or, 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 yeah, uh, or dear, uh, in German, I, I sometimes get, dear Mr. Kirchner. So, if you write this, then I immediately delete the email. <laughs> But uh, if I see, I, I for now, I don't want to exclude any uh, people from other subjects, but I look, does somebody fit and does it make sense to continue in my group? And uh, so I, now I, I had an application from chemical engineering and the person, she was working on, uh, um, on the same substances that I investigate. Um, but she wanted to change a bit more into the chemistry direction, and this is totally fine. But what is not okay if you if you did, let's say, I'm interested in liquids, and you studied solids, and then you try to just continue in my group without having any connections. This is very important that there is really a found founded scientific connection to what I'm doing or how we could continue with this. Thank you so much. Yeah, just. <laughs> The same applies to applications that I uh, usually get. You immediately understand uh, if people are serious about the application and you understand if it's a mass email to like thousands of groups um, or if it's specific. And um, although there are some applications where they are really focused and already um, the, the research profile matched very well with uh, the one of my group, I think um, one should also um, give opportunities to um, people who are interested in the topic but who have not worked on that topic before because for myself this was the case. So um, <clears throat> for the two postdoc positions that I um, had, it was um, not very different but it was indeed different from what I did before and I was just um, lucky that it worked out because I could learn many other things. So one has to express um, uh, the interest and I think it doesn't need to be um, exactly the same um, research focus as before. Because especially postdoc is about learning new things. Thank you. Actually, we got some questions in the chat, so maybe we can circle back a little bit and get to those questions as well. Um, Alexandra Caruso asked, um, how can you explain that less advanced countries research-wise are the ones that have more percentage of women. Uh, would one of you like to say something about that? I don't know the exact reason, but um, I feel that uh, the culture is uh, sometimes very different as we, like maybe tradition-wise or something like this, I don't know. Um, I had a lot of um, students from 
um, a less advanced country, male students, whereas um, the, the uh, and female students, whereas uh, for the German students, there was less uh, openness for me as a female professor, I, I felt. So I think the, the, the culture or the, or the, um, the openness to, to female um, professors, to female researchers, Still, uh, in Germany, it's not it's not there yet. So less advanced countries are more advanced in this regard. So I, I don't know that the deep deep reason for it, but I, but I ex experience uh, the same even in the the daily uh, contact with uh, with students. Thank you. From different countries. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and thank you for the question. Um, actually, uh, to Professor Luda, there was a question about something that you said. Uh, why do you think female colleagues were dropping out after PhD? Yes, yeah, so I'm not a professor actually, I'm a postdoc, so... Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I just... <laughs> too much. <laughs> Thank you, but not yet. Um, no, uh, yes, I think so, at least in my own experience, um, the, but I think this is very much in line with the statistics we have now out. Um, it's because of uh, the family and, and uh, the, the, the balance between having a family and being competitive in science and remaining uh, in competitive postdocs to then continue and, uh, and let's say aim to a leadership position. So at least in my case, what I saw was uh, this dilemma of deciding, okay, actually what I saw that made me very um, sad in a way is that I see many women dropping out even before doing it. So just with the idea of having a family, then they stop even before going for it and then see how it will, it can work out without even trying. So I think on this, a uh, lot of work should be done. Professor Kirchner, you would like to say something about that as well? Yeah, I would like to agree and connect to the uh, previous question, why uh, there are many other countries that uh, are much more equal than Germany. You have to know in Germany, uh, the women were not allowed to elect until 1970. And this was way later than, for instance, in France and in other countries. And uh, the women uh, were very much connected with the, uh, with the family. And it was even in the law written that when there is a marriage, then the, women ha the woman has to do the homework. It's her responsibility. And in other countries, there was a lot of support, or there is already a lot of support. And this is also where Germany has to work. We, di we do not good have, uh, we have good kindergartens, but we don't have kindergartens in a way that you can combine it easily with your work. This is really a problem. As I said in my first statement, we still have to do a lot of work in Germany. So the, the, the help with the family, if for the female uh, pe uh, uh, researchers is not there and the male uh, researchers are only learning now that they have to share this work with each other. So the, the, the culture in Germany was really, this is the responsibility of the women. And uh, this is changing now, but there has to be uh, done much more in order to make this uh, kind of equal and to solve these uh, problems. Because we at a while ago, I, I used to say we have to solve the, 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 the family, uh, we have to solve how, how researchers, female researchers can have a, a, a ch children and raise children, and then we, and only then we can re, uh, solve the equal uh, equality problem in Germany. So you have to know there is still a lot of work to do in Germany. Thank you. Actually, adding on to that maybe a question, at your institutes and universities, um, do you have maybe um, supporting measures in place to support women with family planning? Please? Oh. Well, <laughs> uh, maybe we can go with uh, Professor Kulak first. Yeah. Um, regarding uh, the measures at the university, the place that I'm uh, at now, uh, Otto von Gericke Universität uh, Magdeburg, they are doing great a uh, great job regarding um, um, the support for women for families. They have a great office just focused on supporting families. You can um, call and ask for a babysitter. Uh, they help 
you to find a, a spot in kindergarten. Um, if you have to attend to meetings, um, they will um, they will try to find someone to look after uh, your kids. So they they basically do everything you can dream of. But the question is, it's if you can actually um, use it because every family is. Um, different um, and it depends on um, how you organize your your life and uh, time but there are oh, sorry there are a lot of possibilities so they are really doing a, a great job so um, you can even ask them for uh, for something that you wish that might be implemented because there's indeed money for supporting uh, people as I said uh, like um, babysitters went for attending uh, so that you can attend meetings at certain times even in the evening. So potentially everything is possible, but the question is also if you want this. Thank you. Late night meetings, work meetings. <laughs> so. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Loda, Professor Kirchner, you wanted to add something to this? Uh, yes, I just wanted to mention in my case, I'm also very lucky because here at, um, at the MBL site in Heidelberg, we actually have a daycare on site. So I come to work with my child and I uh, so this is very handy, let's say, if something happens, I, I'm, I'm really close. Um, but I have to say, at least my uh, perception is that this is more the exception than the rule, uh, because I see that outside of MBL, that doesn't really work as a 100% German institute in this, because it's a European organization. Um, downtown Heidelberg is very difficult to find daycare. for example, for kids that are younger than one year. And I see these uh, many uh, postdocs working at university downtown have more issues than I do because uh, there is really uh, not a lot of requests and then it's very difficult to find the childcare for a very young, uh, young child, which is something that I have to say, having lived in the Netherlands before coming here and in France, it's the first time I noticed this in Germany and I was not expecting this, actually. For me, it was, uh, it was a bit of a surprise. Thank you. Uh, Professor Kirchner, you wanted to say something earlier, but that was already said, or? Ah, all right, thank you. Um, so uh, I see that there's a lot of chat going on right now, and um, my colleagues are doing their best to answer questions in the chat as well. Um, maybe we can go to one of the questions that was submit, uh, submitted. Oh, yeah. Um, do you know of specific funding measures that are specifically for women, maybe, or um, other support programs for women? I can start. Ah, yeah, please. I, uh, so, for example, for um, this is something I actually applied for and uh, in, in Germany and got. This is the uh, funding supported by the Nutlein Pollard Foundation. And this is meant for postdocs that work in Germany and have kids uh, for mothers, uh, scientists. And um, it, uh, it, it's really good because it provides support for childcare and uh, household uh, care. And it really gives, um, you know, the a different state of mind in really dealing with the uh, uh, very first months of responsibility as a, a parent and as a scientist. Thank you. My colleague is also posting some funding opportunities in the chat right now if you want to check that out. Uh, Professor Kulak, you wanted to say something? Uh, I would like to add uh, an opportunity which is not uh, related to funding but um, support for uh, advanced um, young researchers, so to say, so um, starting at the postdoc level, um, but specific to Berlin. Um, I was um, uh, a member of this program, it's called Profil, and um, this is a um, program um, including mentoring, including workshops, and it was a great, um, great time there meeting uh, with other female colleagues, and it's indeed a different atmosphere among uh, female, um, female um, young researchers than in, in mixed groups. So um, it was a um, 
very successful. For, it has been. It's still uh, going on. They even have statistics uh, for them um, for how many female researchers became professors now every year. Um, so because they get really uh, great support from uh, the mentoring and coaching program. So for anyone applying uh, in Berlin. Um, starting, as I said, at the postdoc level, I would really like to recommend the profile program. I can also uh, post in the chat. Thank you. Um, there's a question about that, actually, from uh, uh, Laura Bush. What kind of measures do female researchers need besides the already mentioned ones? Um, do you have maybe any ideas about that? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. For example, um, imagine you apply somewhere and you um, get the opportunity opportunity to get interviewed. And um, I think there's also research about uh, this how female behave and how male um, um, people behave in this interview situation. Uh, apparently, <laughs> female uh, people um, females behave differently. So this gives you. Um, support and the also uh, confidence, like exchanging with other um, people, like n that you also know what to say in certain situations. Um, yeah, I think one one uh, thing is really some kind of confidence problem <laughs> female uh, females have still have, uh, which is probably also for these uh, reasons that we had discussed. Uh, before, like tradition-wise, which is uh, in our culture or has been mm. so far. Yeah. Thank you. Would you like to add anything to that, uh, to that, Dr. Loda, Professor Pechner? Okay. Thank you. Um, so I see a lot of questions as well about how to find a postdoc position and how to find a PhD position. Unfortunately, we can't really get into the specific subjects um, because there's a lot of diff different subjects in the chat right now. But maybe um, do you have any general advice on how to find a postdoc or PhD position? Professor Kirchner, please. So often uh, when uh, um, funding is, is given, so uh, that if you not apply for a, 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 a um, proposal like in the DRAD, but you, uh, the, the, your host might have a, a just a written a proposal and got it granted, then they, they, uh, um, they put out an advertisement for this position and then you can just apply for this position. And the good thing is really, Researchers are looking now for internationality and they're also looking for female students. Uh, so you have a good chance if you, uh, as, as we said before, if you not say that uh, you have to be fitting 100%, but uh, you have to make uh, clear why you are interested in this position and why it's, it's good to have you. So if you uh, explain that nicely, I think you have a very good chance and you have to look for these positions in, and they are advertised in, in, in different places. So, um, and this is the best possibility. So you can also write search researchers and just write them emails and say, I would like to work with you. But this is sometimes difficult because sometimes the researcher um, in, in the country doesn't have money. So uh, just writing an email might not be as successful as looking for where is a position open. And um, so it's not that you people are not uh, uh, advertising this. They really want to have international students and are advertising for that. Thank you. Um, my colleagues are also posting in the chat right now some uh, links where you can uh, look for PhD positions and for postdoc positions as well. And you can also check uh, sites like PhD Germany or the DAD website and researchingermany.org for more information on that. Um, Dr. Loda, what was your experience in uh, trying to find a PhD position? Uh, sorry, a postdoc position. 
Yes, so in my specific case, um, I actually visited for a short time the lab where I'm doing my postdoc during my PhD to do a part of, uh, to, to finish part of a project. And then I liked the environment very much and uh, I, I decided to stay um, working on a different topic, but still, um, so it was, let's say, uh, quite, it, it came a bit automatic. I, I really liked the environment, the science, and the way uh, it was done. And then I asked whether I could stay. Thank you. Yes, there are the links for PhD Germany and uh, the DAD, as well as the program uh, that Professor Kulak mentioned earlier. Uh, Professor Kulak, you wanted to say something as well. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to say that regarding positions, it's uh, unfortunately always about money. The same happened, uh, or this was uh, obvious to me also when I applied for postdoc position in the U.S. I uh, wrote to, uh, to the professor of the group that I was really interested in. I said, no, uh, I don't have positions, I don't have money. But when, um, when I wrote that I'm interested in applying for fellowship, um, then it was open. Um, to to accept my, my application, um, so and the same applies, uh, of course, to German universities too. There are only very um, little numbers of um, it's called household <laughs> positions, uh, so uh, programs like uh, the ones of DAD um, are really uh, welcome opportunities um, at uh, several institutes. Thank you. Um, there was actually a question from the chat as well in that context of finding a position um, uh, on more advice about interviews from uh, Maria Chakir. Do you have maybe advice like when you've successfully found a position and, that, and you were invited for an interview, um, maybe you can talk a little bit about how um, to prepare for an interview? Mm -hmm. So usually at the postdoc level, for example, it's expected to uh, give a research uh, talk, a presentation about uh, previous uh, research, and um, then meeting the professor, um, like expressing again um, the interest and um, m maybe even um, creating ideas about potential uh, future projects. Um, and yeah, getting to know people, but like what applies to any interview. So you have uh, people have to know, uh, have to get to know to uh, each other, of course. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't have specific uh, advice. Actually, just uh, be uh, natural and um, uh, give a good research presentation because everything starts with the scientific part, um, I guess, and then um, the the human part is. <laughs> Uh, very important, um, of course, but the, the second step, I, I guess, so starts with a research talk, usually. Thank you. Professor Kirchner wants to add something. Yeah, so it's, it's not important that you know everything what your host is doing, so it's not an examination, but it's good if you can explain what you did, because what the host or the professor wants to learn about you is, how do you think? How do you work with problems? How can you solve problems? If you, do, if you do not know everything, that's not a problem, not at all. It's about how you would solve a problem, how you approach a problem, how your own research is, is going. So you, you don't need to be a, a, a book which knows everything, but you have to be somebody who can solve a problem and you have to show this. So don't worry about having to know what your prophet, what your host uh, knows. That is of course not possible. And then for the personal thing, you, it's 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 not as important as, as as research, as Nora nicely said. But it's as she also said, it's also in a way important because you have to work together. You have to collaborate. And uh, uh, then the the host probably also wants to see: Is it possible to collaborate with this person? Can this person nicely work with me? Can I nicely work with that person? So this is also these impressions you have to transfer. And you, you don't have to transfer that you are Einstein. Uh, you have to, uh, you have to uh, show that you are willing and that you also, if you don't know it, then you will work at this problem and solve it. And uh, so it's, it's basically uh, when you start a research project, when you come from studying, you learn a lot of things. But when you do research, you have to be creative. You have to solve problems. It's a different kind of working than just studying a subject. 
And this you have to show that you're willing to take this step. And I think this is what, what uh, people in Germany would want from you. Thank you. Um, there is another question from the chat. Um, have you ever felt that you've been treated differently for being a woman during your career from Fiorella Fabri? Would one of you like to say something about that? Professor Kirchner. As I said in the beginning, Germany is still, Germany is still not equal between men and women, so uh, expect that you are treated also in Germany differently in all kinds of things. Uh, there are all kinds of problems. Uh, um, we try to give countermeasures to that uh, structurally, but of course this is not always possible. So I have uh, been in Switzerland, where I, with, with the election, that example was actually from Switzerland, not from Germany. Um, and I have been addressed several times in Switzerland as secretary and or as uh, only recently I have been asked whether I'm a postdoc of my colleague Stefan Grimme. Uh, um, maybe for those of you who are interested in theoretical chemistry, you know he's very famous. So <laughs> people ask me whether I'm his, his postdoc. Actually, I'm on the totally same level like him. So that will always still happen. The point is don't take it serious. Don't let this uh, uh, come into yourself. So, so uh, just ignore it or say, okay, this is how it is. I still do my work. I do my research. I do my projects, and this is most important. Don't let these things come to you. Thank you, uh, Professor Kulak. Yeah, thank you very much, Barbara, for these <laughs> uh, words. I experienced exactly the same. But um, indeed, um, regarding the question if uh, we felt uh, treated, uh, being treated differently, um, usually you don't feel like this. But there are these situations when, uh, for example, a new um, research collaboration, a, a bigger program is um, found where people try to uh, apply for a big um, um, for big um, funds, um, and uh, then they come to you and ask, so your research is interesting, we want to have you in our program, but then you start <laughs> thinking, uh, yeah, they ask me because I'm um, a woman, because I'm not so old maybe, uh, not an advanced researcher, it's because of these uh, measures that we are having right now. Uh, funding organizations look at the percentage of uh, female young researchers um, then usually I try to convince people that uh, our research is great, they do need it, and then um, I think, okay, it's uh, fine, it's not because of being a, a woman and of uh, being not that old, maybe. Um, um, but I think it's uh, indeed an issue. Sometimes you, you feel being treated um, differently. Um, and, and on the other hand, I'm thinking, so why not use the opportunity? It's great that they invite us, maybe, as I said in the very beginning, um, being a, a male is might even be more difficult because they might not ask you for participating in um, in a, a bigger research uh, program. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you. Um, since someone just asked, yes, all the links will be provided later on our website and there will be a recording of this webinar as well. So if you want to go back and listen to the answers to these questions again, you can also do that later. Um, there's another question. Do you think it is necessary to have good knowledge of German to apply to these funding opportunities? By Maria Jose Jimenez. Dr. Loda. So maybe I can answer to that. I don't speak German, actually. The level of my German is very poor. I apologize for that. I'm studying, but still... Uh, Still didn't reach a decent level, and I and I was awarded the L'Oréal Fellowship for Women in Science Germany uh, without any problem. And not speaking Germany, uh, German was never a problem. It is a pity for because I could, you know, um, interact more and I could uh, take part in many of uh, um, many meetings like the one we are having now. And I can't because my German is not good. But for the program itself, I didn't experience any problem at all. Thank you. Uh, Professor Kirchner. In academic life, you don't need it. Maybe it's uh, still helpful if you go shopping. But even there, you can survive without German. So 
outside of the university, it's a bit more important, but uh, still there more and more people are speaking uh, English in, on a level that you can understand them. Thank you. Yeah, Professor Kula. <clears throat> and there's a question in the uh, chat even for a professor position. Uh, so regarding um, German language knowledge, I've experienced in different um, committees for professorship selection um, that it depends on uh, where um, the um, uh, professor is actually supposed to teach later on. If it's a bachelor's program, which is in German, of course, then it's required to, uh, to bring some German knowledge or there are these um, things that uh, are suggested so we expect you to teach in German within two, three, four years or something like this. So it's not decisive, um, but it could be. It really depends on the university, on uh, the programs that are the, profess the professors are supposed to, um, to do their teaching. I, um, I think it cannot be answered in, um, in general. Thank you. Um. Yes, Professor Gretner. If you're talking already on the professor level, uh, one thing is very important that you get yourself familiar a little bit with the way the funding system works in Germany. So if you apply for a professor position, which you should do, because there are these uh, Manka professorships, which are now four years after the PhD uh, 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 examination, so there is for postdocs, even an early career possibility to, to come into the system, then uh, you should also make yourself a little bit familiar with how the DFG, the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, so the German funding organization works. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on that, maybe? Um, yeah, so how do you have to apply uh, for proposals? And what, what kind of proposals do we have in Germany? We have this. Uh, collective research proposals, and they are very important. So um, CRCs and SPPs. So uh, SPP is, uh, for instance, at the university, and there are these research groups which are outside of the university. And if you apply in Germany for something like this, they most likely will all you always ask you the question, what kind of uh, uh, um, collective research program would you uh, found if you come to this university? Thank you. This is very important. Thank you. Um, since we were on the topic of uh, being treat, uh, treated differently, and uh, Professor Kulak, you touched on this earlier, um, here is a question as well from the chat from uh, Kura Hertza. Do you feel age is a problem in academia, especially for women? Professor Kirchner, you are nodding. Sorry to say this, but um, this is, I think this is not a very good uh, thing in Germany. We are changing now the system from the habilitation to the, uh, um, to the tenure track position. I like the tenure track position. This is good. But uh, at the moment, they say we employ people. Uh, so there's a lot of professorships, Manka professorships which employ people only four years after the PhD. So if you have, uh, if you are older than or longer away from the PhD than four years, so then you cannot apply for these positions anymore. So um, I would carefully observe what is going on with, with respect to that. We have still the habilitation, but I saw now a, 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 a advertisement for a job where they wrote, a habilitation is a hindrance for this job. So check carefully how the, the, the structures develop in Germany if you're interested in professorship. Thank you. Professor Kulak, you wanted to add something? Yeah, some, mm -hmm, something that I found very uh, important, which was developing, uh, has been developing only recently, is that uh, people um, look more in not into age but scientific age this mean which was extremely important also for me as a mom and uh, um, researcher uh, scientific age means that um, when you had to stay at home for the kids uh, for, for one year for two years depending on the number of kids that this is subtracted from the overall um, number of years that you have been in academia 
Um, and only based on this calculations, people are comparable, or, or the, the output, or the scientific output regarding publications or third fund money, uh, third party funded money, something like this. Um, if we just look at the age, it's uh, not a, not fair at all. So scientific age is uh, important. The DFG also considers this um, when um, when they get applications, or they, they recommend uh, the the referees, the reviewers um, to consider scientific age, not age, because this is discrimination anyway. Thank yeah. you. Um, there is another question here. Um, from Mathi Sadegi, I am an assistant professor and I would like to find a position in, as a visiting researcher. Um, do you have any tips for visiting researchers specifically or, or maybe experience with research visits? Professor Kirchner? Um, this is unfortunately not a standard, so uh, this is a special thing and uh, you can always wish, visit if you have the money, uh, I guess, but, um, or the, the, the host would always say this is okay, but if you have to, uh, you have to somehow finance this and I'm, I'm not aware of any good programs for this. So um, if you're assistant professor, you might still be able to apply for some, uh, there the DRD might be, have the best, better answers. You might be still uh, uh, able to apply for a short-term visit, but uh, all these uh, scientific age and things might play a role in that. Um, and as Nora really uh, nicely said, it's important that you, if you have children, you can uh, add this to your, uh, so subtract it from your scientific age. And it's really important that you do that because the people on the other side, they won't do it for you. So if you don't tell that you have children, then uh, they cannot account for this. But maybe the DRD, uh, so maybe Caroline knows better uh, um, whether there are in the DRD, for instance, are possibilities for these short-term visits. Um, there are actually. I believe there is a program on research visits. If you check the DAD website, my colleague Gab uh, Gabriela already posted um, the funding guide link uh, which links to the DAD funding uh, opportunities and she also mentions the name of the program so you can check that out and um, actually there are also programs that I know from experience that do use the scientific age so that's a very important matter actually. Um, so maybe we can also talk a little bit more on the uh, international ex um, perspective of things. Um, Dr. Loda, do you feel or have you experienced anything different as an international female scientist in Germany? Um, actually, I have to say um, I work in a, uh, it's a, it's a bit exceptional because I don't work really in a, a German university university, but I work in an extremely international environment um, and I have been doing so for the past uh, 10 years <laughs> in different countries. So um, for me, uh, being international and surrounded by international people became the, the normality, let's say. So my, uh, it's, it's more like life, uh, I feel international in uh, life outside the lab. So uh, there, as I said, um, it is totally fine to not speak German, but it would help uh, to feel more, um, yes, to, to have more of a, uh, to be more integrated also outside of work, that's for sure. Thank you. Uh, we only have a few more minutes, but we can take some more chat questions as well. Um, I just saw a question, what about scientific age and sick leave? So if you're chronically ill, for example, um, do you know anything about that? Professor Kishna, you're nodding. If you are sick, you can also uh, subtract this from your scientific age. I know this. But you have to have um, a document which uh, testifies this. You cannot just say, I'm sick. So if you have a document that uh, 
um, testifies this, then you can also subtract it from your scientific age. And uh, there is also, there are certain laws about uh, if you have a handicap that uh, you have to be invited for talks. So on the level of the professorship, it, it, there are also different ways then. Mm -hmm. um, another chat question. How necessary is it for an applicant to have a very good re recommendation letter from Luca Marietta Rizan? So about the recommendation letters, maybe you can say something about that? Professor Kulak. Yeah, I'm a little bit uh, critical about recommendation letters, actually, because um, now the last few years I found out that um, depending on the country where uh, the person from the recommendation letter is very, very different. In Germany, we try to be uh, supportive, but hope make mentioning maybe uh, not bad things, but um, like uh, norm like describing how we felt the person was. <laughs> But um, when uh, people from the U.S. apply, everything is great, the best person ever. The, the, um, the way of writing recommendation letters is very different. And when I get recommendation, uh, when I get application from all over the world, I cannot judge really. Uh, is this uh, a very good letter, a good letter, or even a bad letter? Because even a bad letter, a uh, good sounding letter, can be uh, can be bad. Because I don't know um, what. Um, yeah, well, the, the culture of recommendation letters behind uh, behind it. So what I usually do is uh, with the applicant, um, so which I think are serious about application, talk to them um, via Skype, for example, uh, to learn about their uh, motivation. And um, we talk about potential projects and so on, um, getting a feeling for uh, the personal attitude. And then I go back and ask for recommendation letters. Uh, this is a little bit vice versa than what I did before. I immediately ask, so do you have recommendation letters? Uh, but I cannot, so unless I know the person, the, the previous supervisor, I cannot uh, read the recommendation letters, so what's behind, so if it's a good or very, so uh, it's very different in, the, in different countries. As I said, the best example is Germany and US, very, very different. Thank you. Actually, adding on to that, though, um, if I may also put my thoughts out there. Um, <laughs> so aside of the applying for a position, when you apply for funding and it is um, required to hand in a letter, it is really important that you do hand in a recommendation letter because you might really or you probably will be um, cast out of the selection process if you don't hand it in simply because of a formality. So even if if uh, the recommendation letter isn't that great and you know that, you know, it's, it's still important to hand it in definitely just to fulfill the requirements because don't get out just because of a formality. Sure, sorry if this was a misunderstanding, no. so I just uh, was uh, mentioning on <laughs> when I get applications for uh, programs where they ask for recommendation, that's of course a very different situation. Yeah, yes. It's no choice. So then <laughs> uh, sorry, it was a different, it's just um, I used to work uh, in advising um, others on how to apply on scholarships, and one problem was that a lot of people um, didn't hand in a recommendation letter even though it was required. That's why I said it, um, mm. because a lot of people think maybe it's not a requirement, maybe it's not a hard requirement, but depending on uh, the scholarship, it can very well be a hard requirement. Uh, Professor Kirchner, you also wanted to say something to that. I also personally do not consider uh, the recommendations letters uh, so much, but um, Gabriel, uh, Caroline said one very important thing, and I want to underline this. If you apply at any program in Germany, stick to the rules. Fulfill all the requirements, because as Caroline just said now, you will be thrown out, and maybe you're a good researcher, but you forgot one thing to do, and then you are out of the uh, application system. So please really read the manuals, read the guidelines, and stick to the rules, and fulfill all the requirements. Because if you are not doing that, you will be rejected, and maybe you don't know why. But uh, it's, this is very strict in Germany. 
that you fulfill, this is also for the DFG like this, that you have to fulfill the requirements, otherwise you will be thrown out. They sometimes do not even uh, mention that you didn't send this letter, so they don't remind you. You just uh, skip you. out of the program. Um, we are closing in on uh, the end of this uh, online talking session. So maybe we can uh, wrap up a little bit on uh, what you personally are taking away from uh, this online session. Maybe we can start with Dr. Loda. Well, I would say um, it's difficult. <laughs> maybe one last <laughs> to really uh, yes to not give up. <laughs> And to try different things, it doesn't matter. In my case, it happened for my for my postdoc. The first year, I was very disappointed. I would not get any of the fellowship I would apply for, and and this is tough to digest. But this is also normal, and um, one needs to learn to go through it, I guess. Um, and not giving up makes you better. And uh, try to, if you don't get a fellowship, don't get too disappointed. Try to get the good feedback out of it. Not the first day. You can be angry for a few days and then work on it. And then uh, don't, don't give up, and it will work out. Thank you. Professor Kulak, would you also like to say some closing words? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, of course, there's a lot of uh, disappointment possible uh, when, um, when you apply, but I think the very important thing is to um, just continue what you're really interested in. Not, um, and um, sometimes also luck is important. So if you don't get a specific scholarship or fellowship, does not mean that you're not good. Uh, maybe it was just luck that someone else got it because there are so many good researchers out there uh, worldwide um, and there's not a fellowship for everyone. So just uh, try again, do, do not give up. Um, yeah, just uh, do what you're interested um, in. There is a way somewhere, somehow. <laughs> Thank you. Professor Kirchner, what's your take on that? Yeah, also the, the, so, uh, almost similar from my side. Maybe uh, I want to uh, emphasize again, there is an open window, even if it's not this particular group, but in principle, in, in Germany at the moment, we want you. We really have a, a big need for female scientists in Germany. Thank you. Um, so before we, we close the session, I would just like to say that um, afterwards there will be a little bit of a questionnaire. It's only three questions, and it would help it would help us out if you could answer those three questions that will be uh, shown, so we can uh, learn about how you like this online session. And if uh, you want to watch this webinar again, then you can also check it out. It will be up in uh, a couple of days. And uh, you can find it on our web website. And you will also find the information, the link list, and everything. And you can also check out on our website our publications, because we have a lot of brochures, actually, about funding opportunities about how to do your PhD in Germany and about research careers in Germany. And you can check those out there, you can download them. And I would like to thank everyone for participating, especially our panelists here today. Thank you for coming and sharing your knowledge with us. And thank you for participating.